20th anniversary of NCUR, the National Conference on Undergraduate Research, will be held on the UNC Asheville campus, April 6th, 7th, and 8th. Registration begins at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, April 5th in the Highsmith Student Union. On Thursday, April 6th, presentations begin at 8.30 a.m. The opening plenary session featuring nationally renowned North Carolina artist Mel Chin will be held at 4.45 p.m. in the Thomas Wolfe Auditorium in historic downtown Asheville. The Friday morning plenary session features award-winning chemist Dr. Geraldine Richmond of the University of Oregon. The afternoon plenary session features renowned author Dr. Elon Stavins of Amherst College. On Friday evening, explore the inner workings of the mind with national sensation and college campus favorite, hypnotist Tom DeLuca. On Saturday, join us for one of the following tours, a Biltmore Estate and Winery tour, a guided hike in the DuPont Forest, or an Asheville Historic Trolley Tour. For additional information, prices, and registration fees, please visit the NCUR website at www.ncur.unca.edu. The National Conference on Undergraduate Research is a, a forum for students from all over the country to present their research. They are students who have a really good idea, one that goes beyond maybe classroom um, experience that they want to pursue on their own, and they work with a faculty mentor who helps to guide them in that process, developing a research question and a methodology for their project. You come up with a question and you find the answer, and I think that's a skill that probably the most fundamental skill that you learn in college, or that you should learn in college. To be an undergraduate and participate in research on a formal basis such as INCUR is very unusual. I think it's a great opportunity to have undergraduate research um, a conference where most conferences are at the graduate level or at the professional level. Um, there aren't too many opportunities for undergraduates to present their work and I think it's just as important. Students present their work in either oral sessions or poster sessions. And so we have some of the, the best students represented from across the, the nation, and it's the largest conference of its, of its kind. Normally we have between 30 and 40 students who are participating in INCUR and then travel to different sites around the country. Sometimes the projects are three or four months in length, sometimes they're a full year, but they're really very significant independent projects. The idea for a national conference open to all undergraduates was conceived and first implemented at the University of North Carolina at Asheville in 1986. Despite minimal publicity, a meager budget, and professional advice that no one would attend such an unfocused affair, the initial conference drew an astonishing 400 plus participants. Registrations totaled more than 2,000 at the 10th annual conference at UNCA in April 1996 representing over 300 colleges and universities from across the United States. NCUR is an association supportive of college and university faculty, students, administrators, and others interested in promoting undergraduate research, scholarship, and creative activity in all fields of study, enriching undergraduate teaching and learning by providing opportunities for students to experience firsthand the processes of scholarly exploration and discovery that characterize academic life, assisting faculty and others to understand and appreciate the goals, methods, and results of diverse areas of inquiry and ways of knowing. It gives the student a first um, outside review of their work beside their own faculty advisor or their own institution. It becomes a resume item either for graduate school or for jobs. While initially a conference heavily rooted in the sciences, NCUR has been able to expand participation in all academic disciplines. By 1995, over 40% of the registrants were from fields in the humanities, arts, and social sciences. Theater is great for development on all levels, from the teeny tiny learning how gross motor skills, learning pantomime skills, learning how to um, broaden and make more complex their inter and intrapersonal relationships all the way up through high school. I have never been to a conference which had English and um, history presentations and things like that. That was a really neat experience to be able to see those other things. My project was more along the lines of digital cinema. It's coming about because it's supposed to save film distributors a bunch of money, but 
the theater owners are the ones who are having to pay for the equipment, so I did like a cost-benefit analysis to see how the process would run more smoothly. And I'm a philosophy major and I'm uh, researching how um, the nature of ethical discourse uh, involving controversial biotechnology and um, basically how we should go about formulating a discourse. For my project, I worked in a manufacturing plant in West North Carolina and uh, focused on productivity and continuous improvement there to see if we could reduce um, specifically set up times and role change times and waste at the plant to uh, save them money this year. I think that when anyone hears the word research, then the immediate thought is maybe test tubes and scientific labs and things like that. And, and although that is a very significant component of undergraduate research, um, some things might not occur to you that, that are research. For example, uh, we have a lot of students who are involved in creative writing who will be writing and doing an undergraduate research and producing their, and writing their own work or a book or something like that. Or in the arts, uh, painters or sculptors who are producing um, independent, innovative work and who do research that supports that. That's also undergraduate research. My series is entitled uh, Girls in Boots Returning the Male Gaze. Um, it's a feminist series of paintings having to do with the roles of, of the artist, the model, and the viewer, and reinterpreting those roles in a feminist contemporary context with, within the tradition of the female nude. The most visible element of NCUR's programmatic activities is its three-day annual conference, which is both its voice and its source of credibility. Unlike meetings of other professional bodies, this gathering of young scholars welcomes presenters from all institutions of higher learning and from all corners of the academic curriculum. Through this annual conference, NCUR creates a unique environment for the celebration and promotion of undergraduate student achievement, provides models of exemplary research and scholarship, and helps to improve the state of undergraduate education. I think it's great to bring 2,000 students together to, you know, have this opportunity that they really don't get elsewhere to present their research and be published. My first experience at NCUR 1, I must say, I was a um, pre-med all the way, all the way till my junior year. Then I did a research experience that summer and we had the opportunity to go to this undergraduate research conference. And I remember one of the almost uh, ready to retire biology majors said, I'll drive them down. And so they piled six girls into this old little station wagon and we came down to Asheville and uh, it was a wonderful experience. I gave a poster and um, which, which, which did result in my first publication, my first, uh, so it was from undergrad. I continued that to my, as an honors project. So I graduated with an honors, honors in chemistry. I'm a, now a professor, um, assistant professor at John Carroll University, and it's uh, wonderful. I'm, I'm tenured there, so I'm, I'm happy, and I want to grow old and gray there doing research. We encourage our students to, do, to videotape themselves, actually, doing their presentation so they can see the kinds of things that they want to improve on and correct ahead of time. Um, we also encourage faculty and students within their departments to set up some rehearsals ahead of time so that they have a chance to interact with an audience and to time themselves and sort of really know how they come across. So once they do the real thing, they're not as nervous because they, they know what they're doing and they're sure of themselves. It's just been interesting and good that uh, seeing students uh, give presentations in front of their peers. The students present for uh, 15 minutes and then there are five minutes for questions and answers. And it's very exciting for them because they get to share with an audience what they've been working on for such a long time. And they're the experts in the area. I do the mercury and hair concentrations related to fish consumption and other factors. Just trying to figure out which factors uh, might play a role in having high mercury concentrations in your body. And my project dealt with cycle time and using mechanical Legos to demonstrate cycle time. We were working on correlating mercury concentrations in fish with atmospheric deposition from coal-fired power plants. I did my research on uh, chemically activated alcohols and the de decomposition ratios of those alcohols uh, when they are photolyzed in the atmosphere. I did some simple chemical tests and a benthromacroinvertebrate survey in a new nature center to estimate the water quality. 
My research was on the eugenics movement in North Carolina, which was a sterilization program that um, the state ran from 1929 until 1974. Some of these students are doing projects that have never been done before and they're really on the cutting edge of their area. Now some of them are doing uh, projects that are you know, what we call doable or uh, modest, but nevertheless they're making a distinct contribution to their area and that's, that's very exciting for them to be a part of that intellectual conversation. My research is in the area of applied ethics with assisted reproductive technology. I found that the significant harms of allowing the, um, a capitalist market and selling human genetic material justifies regulation in that regard. I did my research on, it was an evaluation of, the, of a reconstructed stream channel in a restored wetland site in Graham County, North Carolina. So it, it was an evaluation of, of the stability of that reconstructed channel. It's a five-year study and this was the third year of that study and overall it looks like the stability of that channel is pretty intact with some slight changes that are going to have to be evaluated over the next two years. I did a policy analysis of the Bush administration's clean air interstate rule and I just kind of analyzed the policy itself and talked about the controversies behind it. It's a very important event that pulls together not only all the students who are presenting but the, the faculty who have worked with the students as well. INCAR provides a a great opportunity for students to interact with one another. Getting to know students from other universities in similar disciplines, first of all, to sort of compare notes about what they do well and what the other students do well, but maybe even more significantly to meet students from other disciplines and to be able to meet faculty members uh, at schools where they might want to go to graduate school perhaps. I think as a side benefit, the, it allows the students and faculty to meet students from around the country. Uh, from uh, different schools, different types of backgrounds, and, and exposes them uh, to individuals that they might not have been exposed to until that point in time. It's neat to have all kinds of other people around that do different things. The interdisciplinary aspect of it is interesting too. I went to a history session this morning and I've never had the opportunity to do that before. It's always been straight up biology. It was just really neat to meet people from different schools. You know, the people that we talked to were from California and I guess just finding other people who like to do what you want to do as well. And I think a lot of the students, they come out of the uh, presentation and they think, wow, that was really wonderful. I do want to go to graduate school and continue on in this, or I do want to uh, always have research or this aspect a part of my life. It's really helped me to solidify and talk about my ideas in a really specific way. So I feel like it will help prepare me for graduate school. It's, it's really nice to have a really solid background for the paintings that I do. It's helped me um, improve my public speaking ability, which isn't that great. So I'm, I'm grateful for that practice. Um, and having presented, I think, will help me uh, in application to grad school as well. I'm going into a PhD program in August for research that's related to this, so and this is what I'm going to be doing for the next five years. It's very helpful. For faculty, um, again, just getting a sense of what their program is like in comparison to other programs and being able to hear different points of view in different disciplines. The opportunity to see that there is a lot of other research going on outside of their institution. Most of the faculty are involved in, uh, in working with the proceedings um, uh, where we process the papers to be uh, published in, in the proceedings and uh, we also are involved in, in reviewing papers from a variety of different disciplines. Uh, in addition, we, uh, we try to attend as many of the sessions of our students as possible to provide some support and having them see a friendly face uh, in the audience actually helps uh, them relax and, and I think do a better presentation. It also provides a more informal time for students and faculty to interact outside of the classroom because they're doing these formal presentations but then there are all these other um, opportunities to go out to eat with faculty and other students and be in a completely different environment and just sort of bond in a different way. I think that's very significant. I like to keep up with what's going on. I enjoy traveling with our students and seeing them do a good job. Um, I often have students that I've taught 
who are making presentations, either the people that I've taught in literature, although not this year, or people I've taught in honors. There are about five or six or seven honors students here, and I like to hear them do their work. When I arrived to the conference, I was just planning on doing my thing, my, my project, presenting, and then just going back and going to the hotel. And then I was not expecting the atmosphere, the friendly atmosphere and support of everyone in here. We, uh, we found a guy that was, um, it's a, he's a student here, and we got him to kind of take us on a tour over, over the entire school, and we got to walk through an uh, arch that only seniors can walk through and no one else so we felt very privileged to do that. Going on the river walk and the boat tours, the boats were right along the river, and that was, that was fun too. And um, I think the students really enjoy that one too. There's so much history in this area, I just had no idea, um, from Civil War and uh, all kinds of interesting people that have come through this area. So I've enjoyed that. I've learned a lot just walking around. That's where I've learned the most, I think. So. And we enjoy just walking and strolling along the streets. It's such a quaint, beautiful town. I'm just enjoying the whole town in general. It's beautiful up here. I uh, ran through the rain um, to get to a little vegetarian cafe and drank tea and listened to jazz music for an evening. And the travel is exciting yeah. too for the students. They can learn a lot about the area in which they uh, visit for the conference. And some, some of our students uh, this is uh, a significant travel experience for them. When we went to um, Caltech uh, at Pasadena, we uh, had some students who were upset who went to Burger King and wanted to have biscuits and gravy, and uh, they just looked at them and said, what? Uh, you know, things like that. But uh, we've been to Caltech in Pasadena, we've been to Austin, Texas, uh, we've been to Utah several times, Salt Lake City, um, we've been to Kalamazoo, Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, and so it's it's you know it's been a number of places, and I think it's, the students have been exposed, especially students who have not been out of the state before, and um, it's a good experience for them. So it's learning things outside of just uh, you know just Anchor also. I think that uh, one of the uh, distinctive things about having Anchor at in Asheville is the smaller feel of the campus and um, the. Uh, the way in which the whole university comes together to, to make it happen. We're very excited we're going to be back home after 10 years. Well, I think Asheville is the mothership of NCUR. We invented it, we started it, and we've had it three times. I think it's only right that it be back at Asheville in, um, in 2006. I'm excited. I hope that we'll have a widespread participation. If you look at the history, the, lar the, the, the really large universities often don't get as excited about it. If you come to a smaller place like Washington and Lee and VMI or Union College uh, or Salisbury or UNCA, we really organize around it. We make a big, uh, big effort. Uh, we organize our semester around it. We're excited to host it, and I think that excitement communicates itself to the people who come to it. It seems like a very fruitful experience for everyone here. I get the impression that um, the opportunity to present is somewhat unique for undergraduates, and maybe UNCA has a little bit of a leg up on that. I do think it's a great experience for undergrads, and it's a very nice setting. If you're going to give your first talk in a professional setting, this is very, very accommodating. Very, it's a great experience for them, and uh, it was a great experience for me. Although mine was just a poster the first year, I just really was um, enthralled with all the different areas and going around to, to hear all the different types of research going on. Uh, I've been to every anchor. This is my 19th one. The first two were on campus, and I was just curious about what it was about, and I would uh, go and uh, listen to a couple presentations and and also to the poster sessions, and I've seen it grow from year to year, from where we've had a couple hundred uh, students attending to now we have uh, several thousand attending, and the, um, the variety of, of presentations and the variety of participants have, have been, uh, has changed phenomenally. Practice your presentation, and don't read from your paper, and talk to the audience, and make it a conversation rather than uh, a reading. Pick a project that's fun. Probably the most important thing is to choose a topic that you really love because it's going to take a lot of time and you want something that's going to really enjoy doing. Don't procrastinate on your paper. Try and get done as soon as possible because it gets really stressful at the end. <laughs> I would advise them simply to do it. It's an incredible experience. Conferences like this really help, help you get prepared for further research. 
probably most importantly, it's helping me because it's it's continuing my intellectual development as a student. And, you know, that's where the real value is. But um, it, it's also helping me because uh, I'm doing, um, you know, what I would consider is maybe graduate level research at an undergraduate institution. And so, I, you know, I, I have a step a step in um, a step ahead uh, when I when I get into graduate school. This conference provides the primary coherent framework to the national undergraduate research movement. Without it, undergraduate research in America would still be splintered into activities narrowly defined by discipline and perhaps also further divided by institutional type. We hope you will join us for this 20th anniversary celebration of the National Conference on Undergraduate Research.